Hey guys, it's DC here and today I want to talk to you about the work-life balance in cybersecurity. So this is actually a topic that I've covered before but I thought I'd bring in a little bit of an update uh, seeing as things have changed since 2018 slightly. The industry is still pretty much the same. The need is still there for cybersecurity professionals and getting new people involved and working is still a very high priority. With that though comes the need to have more security staff in and with this whole global pandemic thing happening at the moment and a lot of people working remotely, the need for new staff to come in is even higher than it was previously. And that's not a bad thing at all, it's actually a good thing because it means there's more jobs out there for you guys to go and get. But the downside, I guess, of this situation is that you're potentially going to be working longer hours than you previously would have. So I'm going to be using my experience in my last uh, full-time role to go over what I believe the work-life balance is. And that was, it was a full-time contract position, whereas the last video I did was a contract hour by hour position. So it's, it's a little bit different, I guess. Typical day is where you go to work, you start at eight or nine o'clock in the morning, and depending on what level you're at, you would probably work till around five or 5.30ish in the afternoon. So when I was working as a contractor, I would probably just work the hours that they told me to. Keep in mind that any lunch breaks that I took were not paid because I wasn't working. So I would work from, at that particular place, nine until around 12, and then take a one hour or half hour lunch break, and then come back to work and keep working until around uh, 3.30 or 4, which is a pretty short day, but that was the terms of the contract. My last position, the full-time one, I would work from 9 until 5, give or take, and I would have a one-hour lunch break that was actually paid for. Now, that was a, a government position, and I know governments here are pretty cruisy with their time off and, you know, leave entitlements type thing. And I'm not sure if that's the same in the US or the UK or Canada or wherever, but here in Australia, if you work for the government, you take your leave and you, you always get it. It's not like in a private industry where you're probably going to be working and being promised uh, this time off in lieu. And it's, it's like a magical word that you hear all the time and it, it never comes around. And that's common across everything in IT. It's not just cybersecurity. That's, that's pretty much the industry. So yeah, I guess if you're starting out, expect to be working some long hours. You need to put in the work to be recognized for what you're doing and to excel to the next level because everyone can work a standard day of nine to five. But if you wanna stand out and look better than the rest, I'd probably be working those longer hours. Saying that, back when I worked for an MSP, I would sometimes work from like 6 a.m. until six or even later, sometimes 11 p.m. at night, trying to figure out these projects and get through all of the tickets. And I just had so much work to do. I was on the grind constantly. That was like 10 years ago though. So, you know, I was, I had more energy basically. If I was doing that now, I'd be burnt out in a week. Back then I was, I was hungry. I wanted to excel. I wanted to take that next step in my career and I wanted to be better than everyone else. And I didn't really have to, these days, I don't really have to fight to be at the top of the game. I can just use my prior experience and achievements to work my way forward. I don't need to, you know, prove myself at every single job. Unless, of course, you're working in a contract, in which case you have to prove yourself every second that you're there because they're paying for you per hour and they want someone who can really hit the ground running, who's got the skills and experience to just get straight into the job and get it done. I don't want someone entry level who they're gonna be teaching, which is probably another video, I guess, on contracting versus full-time jobs, but I'll do that another day. But yeah, as I was saying, a typical day, you're working nine to five, give or take. You go home, you do some research on some stuff, you do some home projects, maybe play some CTFs, eat dinner, chill out, do it all again the next day. Uh, do I Have I ever worked on a weekend? Yes, but it's pretty rare and it's usually booked ahead of time. Do I usually get my holiday entitlements? Yes, always. The only one that I, I just mentioned before is a time and loo thing, which is a pretty magical thing. You pretty much never get it. So if you do uh, get promised time off in lieu, take it as soon as you can so that no one forgets it because it's never recorded anywhere. If you do get time off in lieu, take it or push them to pay you for overtime. It's not like this crazy grind that a lot of people seem to think it is. Um, I know at the early stages you do really need to work hard to put yourself against everyone else, but saying that, you don't have to do it like that. You can just work normal hours and get by doing that. And if you're, you know, if you're actually really good at what you do, 
that's going to be fine. But for you know, some people, they want to push ahead and, and be better. And I'm definitely one of those people. I, I always strive for something, a next level up. And yeah, it's, it is what it is really, but you're not going to be like a, a slave in this organization or, or wherever it is you're working for. It's not like different to any other job really where your entitlements are different and you have to work these crazy hours. It doesn't work like that and it, it never has. So I don't know whether the misconception here is that people are gonna be working, you know, 11, 12 hour shifts uh, every single day, it's it's so unlikely. And if you are doing that, then you're probably working for the wrong organization. Anyway, yeah, that's my uh, two cents worth. If you guys uh, have any comments you'd like to make about this video, please do throw it in the comments. Let me know what your work schedules are like and uh, how you guys get about your work-life balance. What do you do in your spare time, maybe? As always, if you did enjoy this video, please do leave me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.